The Screwdriver, written by Quack Nate, narrated by Remy Militello. Before I begin this story, I just want to thank this author for allowing me to narrate it. He has an absolute plethora of awesome work over at Our No Sleep, and I have a link to a bunch of his stories down in the description, including this one. Without further ado, The Screwdriver. Incident Report, June 25th, 1993. Subject, standard size, non-branded, green handle, wood, Phillips head screwdriver. The item was initially discovered in a hardware store in Huntsville, Alabama in 1967. The owner of the shop took possession of it in a bulk buy of old tools. Once he picked up the screwdriver, he said he felt compelled to begin dismantling everything in his shop. He was found by employees the following Monday working hard to dismantle the shop's old elevator. After failing to talk him down, they called the police. The man was apprehended, and after having the item removed from his possession, says he immediately lost the compulsion to dismantle, and was horrified at the state of his shop as he was let out. The officer who checked the screwdriver into evidence was found hours later, surrounded by the disassembled shelves and items and evidence. This is when our organization became aware of the object. Upon further investigation, the items dismantled in the shop were not completely disassembled. Most of the parts were removed and stacked into neat, organized piles. Any sort of machinery was left intact in its most basic form. Motors would run, but weren't attached to anything. Electrical components would power on, but were likewise not connected to anything. The object was taken into our possession on September 14th, 1967. It was transported and stored in such a way that human contact was impossible. However, after reviewing the details of the incident, it was discovered we had collected the wrong screwdriver. The real one was unaccounted for. We kept a close eye on reports involving any kind of mechanical issues, but it didn't pop back up on the radar until 1993. Incident Redacted, Kentucky, June 25th, 1993. Police were called to investigate the disappearance of Cole Williams. According to interviews, he kept a fairly consistent schedule in town, despite living an hour from the county line. Several people had his number, but said he wasn't answering or returning calls, so they were worried. When officers showed up at his house, they found his car broken down to its individual pieces in the driveway and the front door laying in the yard with the hinges, knobs, and locking mechanisms all taken apart and stacked neatly upon it. Entering the home, they found every piece of furniture, the radio, and the television were completely dismantled. The frame of the chair remained intact, as did the electronic systems from the radio and television. In the kitchen, they found all the cooking appliances in neatly stacked piles of pieces. The food from the refrigerator was similarly broken down into base components, including, incredibly, a soup. Moving into the workshop, they found a complete mess. There simply wasn't enough room to neatly organize all of the parts from the various tools, projects, and pieces of furniture. Even when we reinvestigated the house later, we were unable to determine what all was in the room prior. Entering the bedroom, they found the neatly stacked and organized parts of the man's bed, nightstands, dresser, all of the clothes, a second TV, a small bookshelf, approximately 11 books, and his wife. Her bones were organized from smallest to largest and by shape. There was a pile for fingers and toenails, three separate piles of hair, 15 neatly folded stacks of skin, her eyes, organs laid out from largest to smallest, two rows of teeth, stacks of muscle from longest to shortest, a perfect sphere of yellow fat, several jars of various fluids, and few more piles of indescribable meat. 
Laying on the bare mattress was her lungs, heart, nervous system, circulatory system, and brain. They appeared to have been carefully and neatly removed from the body, and the heart and lungs still appeared to function. Our physicians would later tell us this should have been impossible. Moving into the bathroom, they found the man working on taking himself apart. He had started with his feet and was midway through his left thigh. His right leg was completely gone, its parts organized and neatly stacked beside the dismantled toilet. Officers on the scene shot him on sight. Not long after, we became aware of the incident and took over, finally gaining positive control over the object. The woman's remains were collected and stored in a sterile case for observation and study. The lungs and heart continued to function for two days, at which point the researchers assumed they succumbed to dehydration. The brain was monitored, and normal but highly stressed brain activity was present the entire time. The rest of her systems were functional. Research physicians are still not sure how these systems were removed, let alone closed in any such a way to remain functional. The pain alone would have sent a normal person into shock and killed them. The screwdriver remains under constant remote watch. Human access is strictly forbidden. That concludes this entry on the screwdriver. Thank you for listening. As I stated before, thank you to this author for allowing me to read this story, and I hope to do more of his many interesting tales. Uh, again, there is a link in the description for this story and uh, many more like it. Uh, please join me again next week uh, where we will be reading a new story. Stay safe and stay spooky.